In this Wireshark tutorial, we will explain everything there is to Wireshark. We will download it, set it up, explain the different network adapters, what different signals and protocols mean, and we will also reference the OSI model, which is very important in order to understand all the packages going through Wireshark. So let us first start by downloading Wireshark. You can go to the official Wireshark website, you can click on download and download your preferred installer. I'm going to do this example on Windows, so I'm, I'm downloading the Windows installer 64-bit. If you're using any other operating system, you can download the other ones. And after that, it's just a click through and finish your installation process. So in order not to waste a lot of time downloading this, I'm going to show you exactly how Wireshark works. First of all, let us go to our front page. So we're going to discard the changes here. And here we are on our adapters. So what you can also do is go to your console, type in ip config, or if you are using macOS or Linux, you should type if config in order to get our network adapters. So basically a network adapter allows our machine or any machine to communicate with the network. So for example, to communicate with our LAN network, which in return communicates with the internet. So we can have different adapters. On this PC, I don't have a Wi-Fi card, so I'm not going to have a Wi-Fi adapter displayed here. But I have a wired connection to the internet, so this is going to be displayed here. So in this case, this is going to be my Ethernet adapter 5, which is my home network. If we go to Wireshark here, I'm going to remove this filter. Um, we can see all of this displayed here. So basically what this is doing, it's tracking our network activity across our different network adapters. So in this case, I'm going to go and choose Ethernet 5. But if you're having a Wi-Fi connection um, and you have a Wi-Fi card on your device, if you're using a laptop, that's going to be most probably the case, you can choose the Wi-Fi option. But since, as mentioned, I'm using a wired connection, I'm going to use Ethernet 5 adapter here. So as you can see, I have a filter here, which we're going to remove. I'm going to stop the capturing. Um, now we're not capturing anything. In order to start our capture, we have to click here on start capturing packets. After we click that, it's going to ask us if we want to save our progress, which we don't want to do. It is not showing us anything currently because of our filter, which we need to clear. And now we have a lot of packets incoming here and outgoing. Let us first reference uh, the Aussie model in order to understand what this is. And don't worry, it's going to be a very short description, which, which is going to help you make sense of all of those data here. So basically, you can find this information anywhere. This is a website that has great explanations for this. So as you can see, there are seven layers, the physical data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. So that's, those are all different layers which help establish a communication between devices over the internet. So nowadays, mostly the IP layer is used, which has only four layers, but you still need the OZ model to make sense of this. You can understand those layers as different functions, adding different headers to our payloads in order to communicate with other devices over the internet. So why is this important? Because the transport layer uses a TCP or UDP connection. And if we go to Wireshark, we see there are a lot of protocols over TCP and TLS and UDP as well, but TCP being the most common one. So in order to understand TCP, we need to know how the flow works. So TCP um, is going to allow us to have a stable connection over the internet. So this works by the client sending a SYN message, then getting an acknowledgement, an ACK for that, and acknowledging that the acknowledgement was received. And there are certain protocols in case that messages get lost, and this is implemented for the reason to account for data loss. UDP doesn't do that, it doesn't acknowledge that the message has been received, but for that we have data loss, and this is mostly used for applications like uh, sending video and anything where we can account for packet losses. But TCP gives us that guarantee that our packets are going to come safely. 
I'm not going to go into more detail here. If you want to learn about it, there are a lot of great resources online to know exactly how the protocol works. Now we also see a lot of TLS protocols over here. I will explain in a bit what that actually means. But let us first um, call a web page and see how this is going to look in Wireshark. As you can see, this is recording all the time and there are a lot of records. So what we are going to do now is go to the internet and go to any HTTP site. But also please remember, it's very important that we go to an HTTP site. I'm here just going to example.com. We can now pause our recordings and we can search for HTTP protocol. And we're going to see that we have just um, searched for our website here. We have initialized a connection from our source IP to our destination IP, and we have received something back. And as you can see, it's plain text here. We can go to the message and see what was actually the content type. We have a lot of header information. We can see the host, which is example.com. We can see the connection type, keep alive. Um, you can also research the difference between HTTP 1 and 1.2. Um, we can also see our frame. Uh, we can see the protocol used. We can see the transmission protocol used. In order to make sense of this, you have to know the Aussie model, which basically adds data on top of the payload when being sent from one layer to the other layer in order either to route it to add security to the packet and so on and so forth depending on the protocol and that's all things that we can see here with Wireshark. If you now actually want to see what our web page returned we can go to um, this call here which is using HTTP 1.1 and we got to 200 and we can actually see here if you go to hypertext uh, transfer protocol, HTTP 1, and uh, if we go to the line-based text data, because what we got back is text with HTML, uh, we can actually see our web page. And this is exactly what was returned um, on our browser. But since we are receiving a lot of uh, packets from the internet, it uh, would be really hard to search for exactly that request. It was easy because we don't have a lot of HTTP requests, but if you're going to do anything else with this, it's going to be hard to find it again. So what we can do is right click and apply as filter. When we apply this as a filter, it is going to filter all our input only for the selected IP address. And as you can see, now we have a filter there. And those are going to be all the requests that have been established with that IP. And um, this doesn't look like a normal IP because we're using IPv6 here. So now what I'm going to do is go to the same web page but using HTTPS. And as you can see, we are now using HTTPS. If we return back to Wireshark, we can stop our capturing now. And what we can see now is that we didn't receive any HTTP requests, but we received TLS requests. I mean, the TLS protocol was used here. And as you can see, we don't have anything here. We can't decrypt this. We can't um, see what was delivered to our web page. We basically can't see anything. The only thing we are seeing are some cryptic um, numbers and characters here. So what's the reason for this? If we go to Cloudflare here, we can also find a great graph that explains exactly that. So we are using TCP in the transport protocol, but we don't want to exchange plain text because as you have seen here, anyone could go in and just interrupt the messages. So let's imagine you're sending your password and username over an HTTP request and someone could just sniff the packets, uh, just add a filter here to filter for your IP and receive your username and password, which would be devastating. So for that, there is TLS and TLS is going to basically encrypt the messages using a public and private key and the TLS protocol on top of the transport layer. So the messages are going to be encrypted 
and then sent over TCP over the internet and then again going to be encrypted on the receiver side. So as you can see, the protocol works by first initializing a TCP connection with SYN, SYNEC and ECK. So we have a stable TCP connection. After that, our client is going to send uh, an initiating TLS connection, which is going to include data about what type of connection it is, um, what protocol is going to be used and so on and so forth. Then the server is going to acknowledge that and send the key, which we are going to decrypt the message with. The server is going to use that and then going to exchange a symmetric key because um, the encryption and decryption process is going to work a lot faster using symmetric encryption. And this goes a bit deeper than what I have just explained here, but in order to not um, create a two hour long video, you can research about TLS on you, by your own and what messages are going to be exchanged for that. But the interesting part is that uh, when you understand the messages which are being sent back and forth in order to establish connections and to understand what happens when we call an API, call a website and so on and so forth, that you can make sense of the messages being exchanged here and which one is being exchanged at what time. If you, for example, um, run Wireshark at home, you're not going to see a lot of HTTP requests because everything is running on HTTPS by now. Not everything, but most of the internet. But the most basic functionalities are running, capturing, stopping, applying filters. You can apply different filters here, um, uh, choose different ethernet networks. You can find out the networks by running IP, uh, IP config or EF config depending on your operating system and you can look at the packets being exchanged here. So basically this is the OC or IP model in action. There are other features from Wireshark where you can analyze your packets, you can get some um, like statistical analytical data around them. Um, you can filter for protocols, you can filter for uh, source, destination, and basically it comes down to those three functionalities, applying filters, um, which are going to be seen here, choosing the right uh, network adapter, which you are going to track, and basically starting and stopping the process. So this concludes this very basic Wireshark tutorial to get you started. So I hope you really like this video and it's going to help you out and you learn something today. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.